All right, let's get started. So we go to our sprites. We're gonna start with these guys right here, which we're supposed to shoot as I planned, and we're gonna flip them around actually. So we're gonna choose flip and Y, and we're gonna go to our prefabs and call it um, shoot enemy. Here we go. These guys are gonna go slow. I kinda want them to fluctuate between um, moving, maybe like weave in and out a little bit. Something like that. So let's make it do that. They're going to be very similar to our fast enemies, whereas they're going to need all new um, stuff. So actually, just to be efficient, I'm going to drag in my fast enemy. Control D to duplicate it. Um, we're going to name it Shoot Enemy. We're going to drag it in to make it a new prefab. Delete our old Shoot Enemy, because we don't need it anymore. Um, make sure this is called Shoot Enemy. And make sure this is a shoot enemy now, so we're just gonna to we're gonna drag this guy in. And we're gonna make him have his red look, and we can now edit it to fit it properly. Go to our polygon collider. We can just delete oops, we can just delete that. Move that one in a bit, and that fits it well. Has all of our properties of the other enemy. We can adjust the Y speed to be maybe two. And we can adjust his health to be 8, which is double that of the other enemy. And now we have a shoot enemy that doesn't shoot yet. But for now, we can actually drag our shoot enemy onto our list over here of enemies. So we just change that size to 2, drop our shoot enemy in on there, and play the game. We should have a shoot enemies coming in every now and then with fast enemies. And they have a lot more health, as you can see. They also get pushed by other enemies, which I might have to change so they don't hit each other. <laughs> That's kind of funny, though. I died somehow, I'm not sure how. It's already getting a lot harder, a lot better. These like lingering guys really uh, help whittle you down some health. So let's make them actually shoot something so they're useful. For our shoot enemies, we're going to make them have the ability to shoot by working with this. So from the start, when they come in, um, if they can shoot, we're going to start making them shoot. To do that, we're going to have to invoke repeating um, a function we're going to make called shoot at our fire rate. And that's why we made our fire rate from the start. Now we can set their fire rate, and now we're, that will all call this method called shoot. Wish I got a bottle of water. I am really thirsty right now. Because I kind of make all these videos in just one sitting. So let's start making our shoot function. And that's going to instantiate. Um, we're actually going to have to call it something. So game object temp equals an instantiated and casted game object which will be the bullet class. Um, and it's going to be going downwards, but it's going to be at the same position. So we'll just call it um, transform.position and equator neon.rotation. No, not rotators. Ro I mean, identity, my bad. There we go. And now we need to make it so our temp.getComponent bullet and we're going to call that function we made called the change directions I think it yeah, change direction which will change the direction of the bullets that come out of it we just need a public game object called bullet which is going to be what this is not a capital bullet a lowercase one cool so now when we look at our fast enemy or enemy enemy for the matter that we can just choose our bullet shoot enemy choose the bullet. And now we can adjust our shoot enemy to have a firing rate of whatever we want it to be. We'll make him shoot a bullet every three seconds and we'll make it so he can shoot. So now when we play the game, we will have enemy bullets that will actually shoot at us. <laughs> Look at him go. And the bullet should damage us too. So let's try that out. 
see how much damage we could take. Got hit once, got hit twice. Oh, yeah, it worked though. So our bullets are actually damaging us now. And our enemies are shooting, which is awesome. Now if you want to make the fire rate a little more interesting, you can add um, a random, or in our start, we can actually make the fire rate this is only if we can shoot. I'm going to make it so if we can't shoot, so if we can't shoot, it's going to return and just won't even do anything past this point. Otherwise, our fire rate equals our fire rate plus a random dot range of negative 0.5 to or 0.2 to point, no, point. Random range of, let's say our fire rate divided by 2, or negative 2, and our fire rate divided by 2, which will basically just have um, a range where it could shoot like half in one direction, like well, half is slow or half is fast. Like each enemy has a little bit of personality now, so if they can shoot, they'll maybe either shoot a little bit faster or a little bit sh slower than the other ones. So let's see if we can get one. Here we go. So this guy's shooting. Looks like he's shooting faster than what this guy is shooting. This guy's shooting pretty slow. Let's make it so our enemies can't hit each other because that's getting a little annoying to look at. So they're in the enemy layer. This guy should be in the player layer. I wouldn't even have a player layer. We don't need one. So we can go to our physics, project settings, physics 2D. Now we can choose so enemies can't hit enemies is perfect. I don't think our bullets are in the enemy layer. They shouldn't be. Good, they aren't. And now our enemies can actually go through each other. So if there is some sort of a collision um, like that, for example, they'll just get out of each other and there's no problem there. Well, unless they spawn in each other. <laughs> then we have a bit of a problem. The game's looking really good right now. So we have our ships coming in. It's difficult. Take some maneuvering. We have our slow and uh, mean spaceships, our fast shooters. I guess the next step would be to make some score, make a GUI, and make an option to start the game. Of course, I do have more ships, so since we're still making this video and we have time left, I'll just go through and make my other ideas for spaceships. So. This guy, um, there's that guy, and then there's, that's it actually, I only have one more idea, which would be like the tank. So I'm going to give this guy a little bit less health, maybe six health. I'll drag him in, and I'm going to change him to the tank enemy. Tank enemy, go down here. These are the guys you want to fear. Or tank enemy, edit his collider a bit. More like a box. I could probably get away with a box collider, honestly. But whatever, it doesn't matter. Alright, and our tank enemy shoots bullets out of the center of him, which is kind of a problem. But it doesn't really matter. We're going to make him shoot at a rate of 1 or 2. He's going to have health of like 8. He's the hardest of them all. The hardest baddie. There's one right there. Try and take him out. So a pretty cool um space scroll effect. It is kind of weird because they're moving like the same speed as the, as those dots in the background. Um, but we can make them move slower or faster. And you can add as many layers of that as you want. So right now, that's our game. It's pretty hard, actually. But it works very nicely, you know? Tank enemies are very difficult. We can even make it so the enemies shoot different colored bullets. So, like, do that real quick. So in our enemy class, we'll just make a public color. And we'll call it... Um, bullet color 
And if we go to our enemy now, we get a public color on here, which is cool. We can just choose the color with our color picker. Make each enemy have a different colored bullet so we know which ones to look out for. And now in our bullet class, we just need a quick um, public void change color. And when we do that, our sprite render, our, um, get component sprite render dot color is going to equal to whatever color we input to change color. So color coal equals um, coal. There we go. So now in our enemy, when we go down to our temp thing, we can also do temp dot get component bullet dot change color. And there we have it. All uh, right, put our color in here. I believe I called it bullet color. Now our enemies will have whatever color we set. I'm going to set the tank enemy to have maybe a in picture with like a light blue color one. We'll apply that, and now we can actually put our tank enemy into our spawn because we actually forgot to do that. Well, I did forget to do that. There we go. So now we can spawn in our three different types of enemies. We can expand the game as much as we want and have asteroids, all sorts of scrolling stuff. Change our bullet color. Um, we'll go to our other shooting enemy and we'll make it shoot out maybe like a purple color. There we go. Now our, our bullets are red and the enemy bullets should be a different color. Are they shooting? Did I do something to them? They don't seem to want to shoot anymore. Did I discourage them? Also, we need our bullets to destroy themselves in a certain amount of time. That's pretty important too. Apparently they are shooting. They're just like invisible. Why is that? Is the alpha low? Oh, the alpha is low. That's the problem. I forgot to set the alpha high on them. So not only do we need to choose this color, but we need to set our alpha to the highest it can go. My bad. And before we go to prevent lag, because there will be a lot of bullet buildup. Um, on the start of a bullet's life, I don't know if we have a void start in here, so I have to make one. We want to kill ourselves to so destroy. No, Dis um, destroy ourselves in maybe uh, five seconds. We'll do. And we're gonna need to put this actually in our enemies as well. So if we do forget to kill an enemy, it will destroy itself in a certain amount of time. So we'll make it so the enemy will destroy itself in say ten seconds. And that should cover any sort of lag buildup that could happen. Then we play our game. If we survive a really long time, we don't have to worry about the lag building up. And we have colorful lasers now. These guys are shooting out um, these like pretty blue looking lasers at a very high speed and a lot of health. They have a lot of health. Yeah, if you want to do good damage, you got to make sure you get both lasers hitting them. And I, I died. I guess I'm bad at this game. <laughs> but that's cool. We can get invaded by ships. The whole thing's basically done, gameplay-wise, but we need to make it so we can score now, because what good is a game where you don't score? So we'll do that next tutorial. Thanks for watching.